Welcome aboard a brand new episode of Hollow Victories. Please keep your hands, feet, and opinions inside the vehicle at all times. I am your host, Matt Presents, and I am joined this evening by my imaginative co-host... Hello, I'm Humany the Human. And today we are hopping aboard this ride that's uh, uh, two, two movies based on Disneyland attractions. Technically, one of them's not a ride. Uh, it's... Uh, 2003's The Haunted Mansion versus 2002's The Country Bears. Yep. <laughs> uh, quick question for you. Have you ever been on either of these attractions or just been to Disney in general? Um, that is a question I was going to ask you. I have, I've been to Disney World in Florida twice. The first time The Haunted Mansion was shut down. While we were there, like it, it was shut down for like the whole season. So the second time I went, it was like a band trip. But I, I told my friends, I'm like, the first thing we're writing is Haunted Mansion. I don't give a <laughs> fuck what you say. The first thing we are writing <laughs> is Haunted Mansion. Uh, I don't I don't think I went to the Country Bears either time. It's like an animatronic show. I could imagine not wanting to see that, honestly. Even as, like, a small kid, I don't think I would have been that entertained by that with all the stuff that's at Disney. I think I would have just seen it as, like, a waste. <laughs> a waste at the time there. Not that it isn't cool or isn't there isn't, like, a lot of work that went into it. It's just, like, I don't... I, I, I don't... I, I don't care about looking at a bunch of animatronics play instruments. Like, for when it came out, I think it was impressive. But, like, post... Chuck E. Cheese yeah. post showbiz pizza. It's like, yeah, I could go watch an animatronic band play for free. And also there would be like pizza and video games there. Yeah. Why why would I go see that while I'm at Disney World? Which is probably why the Country Bears attraction is no longer with us. Probably. Uh R.I.P. I think you you said you said it might be still be open at like Euro Disney. Maybe I I actually saw something because I was looking up both of these attractions and one of the places it was still open at just had a goodbye show. Like I think at the beginning of 2024 or something like it might have just been uploaded in 2024. But it seemed like it was recent, so it's like maybe that other place I was talking about has now also shut it down. Um, I don't know. I have experienced Disneyland through a VHS tape I had when I was a kid. It was like a Disneyland sing-along uh, where I had a bunch of the characters and, like, costumes. It was really weird because it was, like, all of your, like, standard, like, Mickey characters, like Mickey, Donald, Goofy, Minnie, but then Roger Rabbit was just thrown into the mix because I guess that was the same year Roger Rabbit came out. So, yeah, it was all those guys, and there was a Country Bears segment and there was a Haunted Mansion segment. The Country Bears segment really didn't focus on that attraction too much. It was just three of the characters in costumes running around the park, yeah. where Haunted Mansion very much, like, went inside of the castle and showed you shit. Okay, uh, Country Bear Jamboree still open at Tokyo Disneyland. Ah, there we go. I also looked up some videos, like, just in preparation for this. Uh, it's really fun, fun what you can find on YouTube, because there's, like, some, several recordings of this from like 1990 of what the ride was like and it was all shot like shit because it's like cameras didn't really have the capability to film in the dark like that back then at least not cameras that just the in <laughs> that just you know some rando owned but uh yeah people are filming walkthroughs of those rides and i think that's neat because i'm probably not going to disney at least not anytime soon uh so i like seeing that shit obviously it's different but i think it's cool to look at uh, Haunted Mansion's definitely a standout attraction. You've never, you've never been to Disney? Mm -mm. Honestly, I think the only mainstream theme park that, I mean, that everybody knows that, like, everybody's aware of it that I've ever been to is Six Flags, and that was a few in Mitzi. W when we went on the same day as a bunch of local high schools and waited in line the entire time, we rode, like, four rides that day. Well, one of them was, like, a pirate theme ride, which, like wasn't it was cool but it wasn't even functioning right like this audio <laughs> wasn't working in certain parts of the ride there was this room that yeah. was clearly supposed to be a bunch of like happy little elf character not really happy elves they looked creepy as hell but it was supposed to be like these singing jolly characters and they were just well it's it's so much creepier there. in the dead silence it's so much creepier without the music <laughs> I have the. I mean, I have a video of that if you want it. But I, you know, you can pull it from. Uh, you can pull it from my. You can pull it from the Texas vlog if you want to show it. I mean, I, like there's theme parks around me that are cool. I, I think one that isn't like 
it's not that it's not well known. It's that it's called something different depending on which state you're in. I have Dorney Park, which is a cool park. They have like a really good haunted attraction every year. I I went once because my friend did makeup and I got in for free and it was uh, really well done. I mean, very impressive. But it's like called, I think it's called Cedar Point in a different state. I think it's called Carowinds in North Carolina. I've been to Carowinds. Carowinds is kind of neat because it's built in both North Carolina and South Carolina. So it's like right on the line. But yeah, like, no, never got to do, go to Disney. Really wanted to when I was a kid. I, I'm kind of under the impression now that it would have been a lot of waiting in line for most of the trip. <laughs> uh, Disney World was pretty cool the times I went. It's definitely had its highs and lows. Mm-hmm. Anyway, would you like to talk to us about The Haunted Mansion? Yeah, so Haunted Mansion, uh, released in 2003, directed by Rob Min- Minkoff? Minkoff? Director for Hire, directed Stort Little 1 and 2, that's funny because we were talking about that. Did he direct those or did he just help? Because it's also showing Lion King here and I do not think he directed The Lion King. He did! He was one of... He was one of two directors on The Lion King. Roger Allen. He didn't Allen's. direct Holy it shit. by himself. Roger, Roger Allers is kind of like the main guy, but like as with most animated projects, you know, you've got like several layers of directors there. Yeah. And he, he was like the second in command. Well, shit, on, he made, uh, he made he's like, King. he's highly involved with one of my favorite movies. That's, Im- I'll give him that. Jeez. He also directed that Peabody and Sherman movie we were talking about last time. Right, 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 yeah. But anyways, The Haunted Mansion follows a father named, um, played by Eddie Murphy named Jim Evers, who is uh, way too into his job, his real estate job. He doesn't make time for his family. Uh, the film really wants you to know that that's going to be the lesson learned at the end of the film, is to spend more time with family. Him and his wife and kids are about to go on a vacation, to get away from it, but they get one more job that they can do right before leaving for vacation, which is to sell this very old property, which could be huge for them. Uh, Once they make it to that old property, uh, they start to see how creepy it is, and as they actually explore the mansion, one of the the owner of the mansion is under the impression that Jim Evers' wife, Sarah Evers, is the... (laughs) I, I don't know if it's like reincarnation or ghost of his deceased uh loved one and he tries to get rid of the family and get her to stay with him and marry him uh and there's all kinds of other things going on involving service people and their butler who's revealed to be a villain by the end of it what did you think of haunted mansion matt (laughs) i this is a great lesson in the importance of a good script because i think most This movie has a lot going for it. The set is amazing. I love the sets in this movie. Beautiful mansion they filmed this in. The effects are pretty good. There's some CG that doesn't... That that hasn't aged well. But, like, the ghosts all look really good. I like the way the ghosts look. The performances... No one's really doing a bad job. And I even dare say, like, some of the actors are, are giving really good performances... It's just the script that sucks. Like, the story is boring and predictable and and meandering. It, like, like, like barely pays any attention to the main hook of the the plot. And most of the jokes don't land. There's, like, a few decent jokes, but I'm sure... I'm sure, like, most of those were just, like, Eddie Murphy riffing. Yeah. (laughs) Happening to say something funny. Yeah, I, I think that Eddie Murphy is, like, trying, you see him in this movie trying his heart out, but it kind of feels like the people who wrote it, uh, like, were kind of referent, like, just kind of looking at other Eddie Murphy comedies. Because I think it's weird that this movie is an Eddie Murphy comedy. I think that, like, especially with the dark backstory it has, because, I mean, it opens on a fucking suicide. Like, it opens with a guy hanging himself. Like, it's, I, I feel like they should have found... You can cast Eddie Murphy in this if you want. I, I think he could. I think he could do. I think he could pull it off. But you gotta, you gotta tone him down a bit. He's not playing fucking donkey. You know, <laughs> he's he's playing a man who's losing his entire family potentially. I, I do think he does pretty good in this, just because he's I supposed agree. to be like this, this like 
I don't, he's got a very good shit eating grin, you know. Yeah. The the way he's always so like chipper and like, oh, let me help you out. Oh, hey, uh, <laughs> Evers and Evers. They do. Re- he does a really good job turning it on and off too. Like that's a pretty big running bit in the movie. As you see him get annoyed and then very quickly turn on the chipper face that you're mentioning. Yeah. Uh, I think I, I think I agree with you. Like performance wise, like they're. Uh, they're really not bad. I'd say, like, the two worst ones are the children performances, but they're not that bad. Like, especially after especially after watching fucking Country Bears, man. Yeah, I, I don't even... Like, I think they're, like, fairly decent child performances. They get the job. Honestly. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't say... I'd even say they're bad. I'd just say they're, they're probably the weakest in the film. What One of them, uh, Michael, named after former... Hollow Victory star Michael Jordan. What's this is like the fifth character we've had on this show named Michael. We've had one character named Matt. There was a character named Matt in in Pod People. <laughs> Bunch of Michaels. Uh, so I I guess we 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 can talk about how this like ties into the ride because I mean for one thing I I think they get like the aesthetic down pretty well like i said great sets in this movie i really like this mansion yeah it looks really good um and there's there's just a scene where they're like loaded up onto this carriage with a huge glass window and they're riding through the graveyard and you see all these ghosts dancing around and it's like well this is just the ride this is just what it's like to ride the haunted mansion yeah, probably probably did do a good job of getting those in. I mean, you also can hear in like the score, like the grin grinning ghost is like kind of a reoccurring theme. They do have like it played in a more upbeat fashion, but they also have like a more slow and like uncanny version as their first enter in the mansion. So there's, um, you know, there's a lot of yeah, there's a lot of references to the ride. I mean, every it feels like every aspect of the ride that I'm aware of from just seeing like footage of it is there. You got the crystal ball, you got the singing heads, um, you got the ghost that you just mentioned, kind of like in that strolling, like that kind of ride along part of it. Uh, yeah, just <laughs> it feels like a pretty, it feels like pretty solid. Like I think you already said, like you, you talked about the set working really well and I think that's true. I think that it like represents the ride well. It's just kind of, since it is a movie, you gotta do a little more than that. Yeah, I, I mean... I, I feel like it doesn't, like, that's that's the moment where it's like, ooh, look it, this is what the ride looks like, and that seems, like, well and good, but, like, I don't know, I, I feel like they haven't captured that, like, you know, haunted house, but it's kind of fun vibe yeah. that, the, that the, the ride has. They have, like, all the characters from the ride, the hat ghost appears, the, the singing busts from outside appear uh yeah i think that honest to god the story i'm okay with the story they went for it because i think it kind of mixes in like potential for fun scenes but also i like the i do like the unsettling story i do like the unsettling like i think it's creepy that this guy thinks that eddie murphy's wife is like either his wife reincarnated or just her spirit or something like that I i think that him wanting her to stay but the rest of the family to fuck off is kind of depressing and dark and i think it can set up some good drama and some good like it could be i think it could be scary and i think that you know tying that in with eddie murphy's character being someone who isn't putting family first not appreciating family while this person is trying to appreciate her i think i think you could do something with that i really do i just think it comes down to the like dialogue i don't think any of the dialogue is very well written or all that interesting i also think the film has some pacing issues. I think it's kind of a drag to get through. It's not terrible, but it's just, I don't know. I got kind of bored. Like I said, it's kind of meandering. It's because, because they got to keep sending them all around the haunted mansion, to all the fun little locations. Like, ah, look at this. Remember this from the ride? Ah, we're here. Remember, remember this from the ride? Ah, now we're, we're going here. Woo. Plus, also, like, I, I almost feel like they, they did not have it, it enough material for, like, 90 minutes. Probably not. I think a way that they could have maybe, like, helped the pacing of the film a bit would be to 
kind of just like reveal things a little uh, slower throughout. Because I don't know. I don't know if you really like needed to open the movie on the guy hanging himself. The opening of this movie is like weirdly bleak. Yeah. Like b- before it throws to the opening credits, we see two deaths. One of them a suicide. Yeah. I think that you could have like the film play out in a way where you kind of like maybe show the events at the beginning of the movie before things went sour. Um, and now as the movie goes on, I think they should have just kind of kept cut into the past. So you could kind of like experience what this like mansion was back in its like glory days, followed by what it is now. And I think maybe that could build to not only like the horror element, but again, it could just be like a fun visual to throw in. Um, I don't know, maybe explore like, you know, like, (laughs) Uh, these you know a lot of these ghost characters are kind of wacky and weird now and kind of explore like what made them turn that way like the the singing busts are are spirits right (laughs) they're technically spirits they they don't go to heaven at the end so (laughs) i i don't think i think they're just like enchanted busts Mm. that's true honestly i don't like these are just suggestions i don't know how you fix this movie i think it's just like yeah like because I wouldn't want to write the script to this one. I just think that I, I I agree. It's a script. It's just kind of... It's boring to me, and I don't think it... There's so many things working for it to where it shouldn't be boring. Yeah, I mean, they they pull this, like, very cliche story of, like, ooh, he's focused too much on work and not on his family. And I honestly don't feel like they do a great job making him come around on that i get it okay like the 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 evil villain is after his wife so he has to learn to like appreciate his wife a little more but i don't feel like he really learned to spend time with his family more yeah i think you're just learning what he's not supposed to do not really how he's gonna fix it i think that's like an angle of his character that you could take and you could do it effectively but Really, it's all, like, explored within, like, a two-minute scene at his house, and then they just kind of keep reminding you that he is really into his job. But, I mean, his family's willingly there with him. It's not like he's being that shitty. I don't know. I just kind of feel like... <laughs> I, I, I just kind of feel like there's ideas in this movie that they don't really explore that well. That could potentially add runtime. And it is very cliche to do a whole, like, oh, he spends too much time at work and not with family, but... One of the things that hurts that is he does work with his wife. Yeah, no, it's her business too. Yeah. Um, and another thing that hurts that is just like, I don't know, I mean, he's a pretty he's a pretty good dad throughout most of it. He's not really, I don't know, it's... And I mean, you can you can have someone be a good person and flawed, but it's just, I don't know, it's just, they don't really... Ex- I just don't think they explore it that well. I feel like, yeah, because like, I feel like if they did explore it better, there would be more of a satisfying pay off of him learning that he has to like change his ways there's this like really odd part of the film where his his daughter knows some latin she's like oh i took three years of latin and i'm like you're like 12 how have you taken three years of latin and and then later eddie murphy comments on it he's like 12 year old who knows latin <laughs> <I'm> like <laughs> yeah what the fuck even they acknowledge it's weird. <laughs> well, in some states, they start teaching Satanism as early as second grade. Ah, <laughs> uh, can we talk about the ending of this movie? <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> so, okay, Terrence Stamp, beautiful villain, by the way. We'll we'll get to the cast here in a second, but uh, he he's like gonna poison eddie murphy's wife and then eddie murphy stops it and he's he says he says damn you damn you all to hell in a disney movie (laughs) (laughs) and then like a portal to hell opens up but then like the demon reaches out and grabs him and pulls him to hell (laughs) it's just such a weird it uh, like it's it's like it's hard to figure out what's even like happening in that scene. You're just like, what? Well, oh, there's a portal to hell. Oh, oh and he, oh, oh, he's getting like pulled into it. But then, then the guy saves Eddie Murphy. Like the owner of the house saves Eddie Murphy from being pulled into hell too. 
And then, and, and then everyone in the house, all of the ghosts in the house, uh, go to heaven because... I guess they don't confirm if Christianity is true, but heaven and hell, definitely real. Heaven <laughs> and hell are canon to the haunted mansion. Uh, I, I, when you ride the ride, just remember that all of these people are barred from entering heaven. <laughs> and then, and then the final shot of the film is Eddie Murphy and his family driving away with, uh, Madame Leota and the singing busts across this like it's this like cgi shot of the longest bridge in existence you and i at the same time made the joke that it was the bridge from california to hawaii <laughs> it's like <laughs> what is this what is this bridge where did this come from where are they going just a just a weird confusing ending all around for sure. It's, uh, <laughs> I swear, like, when he, um, like, the main villain of this movie, uh, yeah, Ramsley, I guess is his name, opens that portal up. It's supposed to be, like, this big moment for him, and he just immediately fucked up. That's what it just feels like. It feels like a fuck. <laughs> feels like that's, like, his big, his big moment. This is when he's gonna take all of the heroes out and just, like, immediately backfires on him. It's almost comical how quickly that happens. It it feels like they didn't know how to defeat the villain, and they're just like, uh, he tries to send them to hell, but then he goes to hell. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, and we we should also talk about like like when the movie starts and they've got like, oh, this dude had a had a crush on a woman who looked just like Eddie Murphy's wife. I'm like. Are they gonna talk about the implications of of like a rich dude from the eighteen hundreds trying to date a black woman? And not really, but but also like the the villain's thing was like, oh, he couldn't marry that girl, and I'm like, and we, we, you and I were both just like, all right, yeah, he's racist. We we agree on this. He's just fucking racist. Yeah, it's it was weird. <laughs> well, he didn't really elaborate on what his issue was. But that doesn't make it less weird. That just makes it more weird that he didn't elaborate whatsoever. Does not. I mean, I, I feel like I almost have more to say about Country Bears. It's not like we haven't been talking about this for a while. Um, do we want to talk about casting at all? Oh, <clears throat> I mean, Eddie Murphy, we already kind of talked about. He. I think that he did fine, but I also feel like the people who wrote the script were trying to write it to make it like an Eddie Murphy comedy, and I think that did kind of hurt the movie a little bit. It's not really his fault, though. Yeah, he's he's really good for the role, but and and like I said, I'm sh I'm sure like a lot of the the parts I found like actually funny were just Eddie Murphy improvising a funny line because he's a funny person. Yeah, someone I, we might see again we'll probably will see again kind of surprised we haven't seen him before this mm -hmm. yeah i mean he did a lot of uh he did a lot of comedies <laughs> like if it's a funny more guy. Around. yeah oh yeah for sure uh i mean I, I loved eddie murphy when i was a kid definitely in some good stuff but like also in some real stinkers yeah I mean, yeah, it's just like he was just another really popular comedian who started show up, showing up in a lot of movies. If if you are both of those things, uh, you're going to be in some bad movies. Yeah, and I, I there was definitely, like, like most of his good stuff was in the 80s. He kind of floundered in the 90s, but then, like, Mulan and Shrek pushed him back to the top. And that's, you know, how he ends up in something like this. Yeah. Marsha Thomason, honestly, just kind of, I don't know, doesn't really, kind of a corny performance in some scenes, but... You were saying the kids were the weak link. I kind of think she's the weak link here. You might be, you might be right about that. She, she doesn't do a whole lot, and I, I don't think it's, like, that great of a performance. Great, again, like, partially because they don't really give her that much to do. She she's like kind of a MacGuffin in the story, you know. Like, oh, this the the the, the that guy's gonna steal your wife. You better do something about the guy that's about to steal your wife. 
I I kind of I was like she looks a little young for Eddie Murphy. Looked it up, 15 year age gap between these actors. <laughs> I mean, that's not too uncommon for movies like this though, right? Where it's like popular comedian and then young woman. That's and I I mean it's not even like Eddie Murphy, he still looks like fairly young in this. I I think yeah. it's it's not like blatantly obvious that there's like a huge age gap between these two. I mean like 15 years, that's not that's that's an age gap, but that's not like a huge age gap if 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 you're just actors. Yeah, and also it's not like uh it's not like it's like a 20 year old and a like 35 year old it's they're they're both a little older at that point um yeah not much to say about her um terrence stamp uh we you already mentioned he, he was great in this he was really funny uh both intentionally and unintentionally because i think there are parts where you're supposed to kind of laugh at how ridiculous his character is but a lot of it just comes down to him i was like making jokes about how he just randomly appears behind people like non-stop Terrence Stamp is like one of my favorite underrated actors. He shows up in so he's so good in the things he appears in, and and he, he I don't think he gets enough credit. Yeah, you're mentioning some of the other things he was in when we were watching this. Yeah, well, he was Zod in the first two Superman movies. That's what he's best known for. Uh, also, te- technically, a return appearance from him. He was Chancellor Valorum in Star Wars Episode One. And he he's he's like the old guy in Last Night in Soho, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. He's in some good stuff. Plays the devil in The Company of Wolves. It's a very small role, but he's so good as the devil in that movie. <laughs> uh, I mean, he's he's really good as like the evil butler in this movie. Yeah, he works. He's got, he's got kind of a good like Boris Karloffy voice. Uh, Wallace Shawn made his big comeback to Hall of Victories. Yes, after his glorious appearance in Southland Tales. <laughs> I mean, he's pretty good in this. I, I think him being a, like one of the servants works. I, I, he's a Wallace Shawn is just kind of a goof. He's got such a goofy voice. You hire him for goofy roles, and this was a goofy role that he did just fine. Yeah, no, I, I, I was fine with Wallace Shawn in this movie. Jennifer Tilly as Madame Loetta. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm sorry. I just I'm always gonna hear Bonnie from Family Guy, <laughs> unfortunately. And I'm always gonna hear Chucky's wife. What's the monster? Celia. Oh, Celia. Nathaniel Parker plays the uh, uh, Mad Master. What is it, Master Gracie? Yeah, Master Gracie, the the owner of the house. Who's trying to get his dead wife back? Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry, his dead fiance. They were never married. Yeah, no, they're, they're getting married at the end. It's finally happening at the end. It's a very happy moment. Tears of joy. Ah, uh, he's fine. I don't think he delivers lines badly. It's just kind of like it's. I don't know. I feel. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm a little less enthusiastic in this episode. I. Uh, I feel like I'm a little bit off my game today. I am tired as shit, and I am talking about two movies that bored the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> There's good things about both of them, honestly. They're not, this is like, neither of these are that terrible. It's just, God, they like, I just didn't care most of the time we were watching these. Honestly, I like, I, I feel like these are two of like the better movies we've watched in terms of like. In terms of just, knowing how to make like a movie. Objective yes. quality. Yeah. There's a lot I could compliment in both of these movies. Yeah. But ultimately, neither of them are all that interesting. <laughs> no, really. Like, the most interesting thing about them is the rides they're based off of. The attractions, I should say, because Country Bears isn't even a ride. Dina Spybay, is she, like, the other, like, butler or, like, servant? Yeah, um, yeah that's her. Yeah, she's fine, too. She was in striptease. <laughs> was she really? So this is, yeah, this is a return for her to very... Like minor character in that, but we've uh, got a lot of co- comebacks in this episode because even Country Bears has some returning faces, <laughs> and some that probably should have been a returning face by now, but I don't think have been. Yeah, shit, I don't know. Like, I, I, I guess that's uh, about all I have for casting. Is there anyone else? Like, both the kids. Like I said, I, I, I called them the weaker roles. I'd actually thinking about it, I would agree that they did better than the 
the wife, but it's also like I don't think they're bad. It's just it's just like a Disney movie. I don't know. I, I'm not I'm not asking to be wowed by the child actors. It's fine. They did what they were supposed to do. They weren't yeah, insufferable no, they like were, the kids in Country Bears. <laughs> they were fine. Um, <laughs> weirdly, one of them, the the boy Mark Johnson Jeffries, was in like plenty of stuff. He was in Nemo. He was in Monsters Inc., Spider Man Two, Stuart Little Two. The other one, this is her only a- appearance in a film. This is the only movie she was ever in. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know, that's... I I don't know that I have anything more to say about the Haunted Mansion. Yeah. Like, there's a lot I could compliment about it, but I don't know, it's just, it's a weak script, and I think you could have made something way more interesting out of this ride. Yeah, I agree. I agree, I mean, I think I think the Haunted Mansion certainly had more potential than Country Bears. I think it had a lot. I think Country Bears had potential for, like, a Disney Channel cartoon, you know? Where, like, I don't know, it almost feels like they're trying to be a fucking Blues Brothers in the Country Bears movie. I I'm I was going to call it Blues Brothers, but lame. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it has, it's so similar to the Blues Brothers <laughs> in so many ways. Are we moving on to the Country Bears? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's time for that. Introduce Country Bears for us, Matt. All right, so uh, Country Bears is a film that takes place in a universe where bears and humans kind of coexist. You don't really see a lot of bears living alongside the humans. Really, outside of, like, the main character, Barry, and the Country Bears, uh, there's, like, one kid you see at, like, a, a, a car wash and that's it. Although there is mention of, like, a panda. I think we're just to assume that, like, sentient bears are a thing in this universe. They're just, like, a, a huge minority. So this, it's it's about Barry Barrington. That's his name. Barry Barrington, who is obsessed with this old group called the Country Bears. And he, he feels out of place with his family because they're all humans and he is a bear. So he, he runs away from home to go to uh, the Country Bear Hall and uh, finds it's going to be closed down by the evil banker played by Christopher Walken. And he says, well, why don't we get the Country Bears back together to play a benefit show to save the the Country Bear Hall? Uh, and from there, it's basically just like a, a getting the band back together film where where they go to all the different members of the band and try to convince them to join up. And of course, right near the, the third act there, there's a big conflict and it looks like it, the whole thing's not going to happen. And so Barry runs off back home to his parents. But then then the, the country bears read like a two paragraph essay Barry wrote about them that really doesn't say much beyond like, they're such good musicians. And, and that inspires them to actually put on the show and... And they gotta invite Barry to to play with them. Hell yeah! That was the whole movie. Like I I usually I leave the ending a little ambiguous, but no, that was the whole movie. That was all the way to the end of the movie. Uh, what'd you think of Country Bears, Michael? It's uh, it's about as cliche as you get. You say the words "get the band back together," and you already know what the whole thing is. It's very generic. I I, I like the uh costumes. I think even though they do look a little bit corny, they still like emote. They still like they're still designed fairly well there. Then maybe they could have made them look a little bit more distinct from one another because I do kind of forget uh, which one is which based off their appearance. It's normally by voice that I can tell which one is which. But I, you know, they they emote. They the lip sync is done really well. They, you know, it's not they're not super unexpressive. I kind of prefer that to CG, CG that Disney likes to do now. Even if it does look a little corny, yeah, I still I, think it's a lot more charming than what Disney's doing nowadays. I, I I mean, on the one hand, it is based on like an attraction that's animatronics so maybe they're animatronics just sort of as a nod to that but i also feel like this came out in 2002 this is like the last year 
this film would have been made like that. This is like the last year they would have used animatronics <laughs> for the country bears. Even just like a year or two later, they'd have been CG. Because this was this was the same year as the Scooby Doo movie, right? With the CG Scooby Doo. I think that might have been two thousand one. I think it was two thousand two. Was it okay? But if this movie was made any later, the the country bears would have been CG. Granted, li like you said, they are a little hard to distinguish, and like the old school country bear jamboree animatronics were pretty easy to tell apart. Even in that Disneyland thing I sent you, they had like the costumes they had were very different from one another. Yeah, I, I I honestly couldn't tell you which bear in this film was supposed to be which bear from the old attraction. The only way I can tell them apart in the movie is like like Ted wears glasses. The well, honest to god, funny enough, I think the bear that looks the most different is the one that's like just working at the country bear house the whole movie and doesn't go on the journey with them because he's a lot bigger he's a lot chubbier yeah yeah i don't know they could have made the fur colors a little bit more distinct they could have made like one a gray bear one a brown bear yeah and they they certainly could have made them a little cartoonier than they did yeah they all do kind of just look like they look like real bears but with human eyes they all have human eyes I'll, I'll say that the costumes in that Disneyland thing I sent you is a little creep. Like they're a little uncanny and creepy in that, but well, no, but it's also kind of like I don't know. They stand out. I remember what they look like. The reason the ones you sent look kind of creepy is they decided to pose all of them in the middle of singing. Yeah. So all of their mouths are in like weird singing positions. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. Prop props for the the animatronics in this movie. Good animatronics in this. I like a lot of the music. Not not all of it. Some of it is just like s music from that era that I'm not, too, I don't think back on too fondly, but a lot of it I thought was fine. Yeah, I don't know. Weirdly, like, like it kind of seems like aesthetically they're trying to like tap into like the music that was popular around this time. But then like none of the music really sounds that contemporary in the film. Like, they, they meet uh, Brad Garrett's character, Fred, I think is his name. They, they meet him, and he's, like, doing security for this, you know, uh, modern pop singer. And she looks like an Avril Lavigne type. But then the, the she's like, hey, come play with us. And the song they're playing is this, like, kind of soulful, kind of old school, like, R&B song. And, like... I don't know, like, 2010s, that would have been popular. 2002, no. That is not the sound of the time. It's, you, you th th this is absolutely not the sound you expect to be coming from this musician. Right. Even just looking at the cover and seeing, like, Haley Joel Osment Bear posed with, like, the, the, the rock guitar. It kind of looks like it's gonna be, like, a, you know, early 2000s, like, rock and roll thing and they definitely they pull a lot from the aesthetics of rock and roll for what is supposed to be like a bluegrass band yeah <laughs> but you know i i think i think most of the music is fairly true to the country bears yeah I, i'd say the only one that like really threw me off is the one that has that one i don't even know who she is really i i could tell that she was like a popular pop artist from the time it's not the one at the the restaurant because that one still felt like tonally correct it's the one where i think we is it fred that we meet in that scene again it's hard to remember these characters i think it is fred and he's like working as a security guard yeah um no that's that's the one i was talking about as being like that's not the sound that artist would be singing yeah like that one's definitely the one that like that's definitely the one that like stands out the most and not in a really good way because that just reminds me of shit i'd hear on disney channel back back in the day they're, they're like they're trying to make the country bears cool they even had everyone jumping on trampolines like the disney channel movie intro but yeah, I, I, I liked the mu music in this movie. I, I can't even say I, I can't even say there are any like weaker tracks in my opinion. Yeah, I think I mean I think most of it's fine. It's all pretty decent. Yeah. And and I think I think for the most part they do a good job of like integrating the musical numbers. 
the 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 one at the restaurant is the one that feels kind of odd to me because the country bears aren't involved in it at all. Like supposedly it's their song, but like if it's their song, maybe like they get up and start playing it while that girl sings. They don't feel very involved with that one. Where where even like the earlier like pop singer one, at least you know Fred's there playing the harmonica and dancing around with them. Well, not only that, but that's the one where, like, it feels like this movie is playing very much like it is a musical in the sense that it's bands playing songs, but they are songs that exist in universe. Like, it's not like a musical where every character is a participant. Where the one in the uh, restaurant's the only one where it's, like, really, like, yeah, even the fucking, like, customers are joining in on the song. Like, everyone was prepared for this. Um, And it's the only song in the movie like that. (laughs) Again... It feels like Blues Brothers. Yeah. That's the way that's the way Blue, Blues Brothers does its musical numbers. Right. I think Blues Brothers was a little bit more consistent though. Oh no, I mean Blues Brothers is the infinitely better movie. Oh but... yeah, no, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just uh I'm trying to think of anything else I have to say about this one. Um I do think it's kind of funny how they play up like how unpopular the country bears are. Yeah. Because it feels like kind of a reflection of the attraction like they were so big back in the day and now they're just like like no one cares <laughs> yeah <laughs> worked better when they did that with the muppets they get a lot of musician cameos over the end credits to talk about how influential the 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 country bears were the only one they play in the actual movie is uh Willie Nelson yeah and then also also, Queen Latifah shows up in, like, a minor role as, like, a bartender. We didn't even mention this. The, uh, apparently in this universe, Honey is, like, booze. Yeah. <laughs> so she runs a bar that serves Honey. And and the the one bear is a honey addict. <laughs> but then, then, then she appears at the end of the film as Queen Latifah. And it talks about, like, the influence of the country bears on on her and her music and among the other weird celebrities they get to appear at the end of this movie exhibit the rapper <laughs> i'm sorry if you did as you mentioned elton john yet who's now <laughs> oh yeah a fucking return in hall of victories <laughs> the return of elton john previously in the spice girls movie he only he only appears in movies about the greatest bands. Yeah. The Spice Girls and the Country Bears. When are we getting a crossover? <laughs> uh, Spice World versus the Country Bears. There we go. That's an episode. <laughs> yeah, Elton John appears in it. In kind of a funny role, actually, because they, like, they think he's just the, the other bear's gardener. And, and then they're like, no, that, that, that was, that's not my gardener. That's Elton John. I'm living at his house. That is something I can give this movie, is I had some genuine laughs throughout. Not enough to justify it or not find it, like, not boring. <laughs> but it's, uh... Yeah, no. I, I got a lot of laughs out of Christopher Walken's character. Um, and a lot of that is just from Christopher Walken being Christopher Walken. But, I mean, his car well, okay. had, like, that bo- bulldozer ornament on the front of it, which was funny. The uh, There was just some weird edits with him, like after he kidnaps the group of bears and it's just like, Oh no, they must have been kidnapped. And it's a sped up shot of a truck of the, their bu- tour bus going by. And he's like, <laughs> and then it cuts right back to them. It's like, that was so weird. That's such a weird it's, <laughs> pace. It's the most, it's the most abrupt edit. They walk back outside and they're like, what? Where's the tour bus? And then it's it's just this like really awkward cut of like the country bear bus speeding by, and then it's it's Christopher Walken laughing maniacally, holding the country bears at gunpoint for like three four seconds, and then it cuts back. It's it's <laughs> it's the most abrupt out of nowhere thing. It's really funny. Yeah, but I mean there are deliberate laughs in this too. Yeah. I mean, I, think, I almost feel like that is a deliberate laugh. They're letting Christopher Walken be his awkward self in this. I think they're aware of they're. how, like, corny and silly he comes off in this. I don't think they're... I mean, I know you know they're not taking the villain. That's one thing I'll give them is, like, out of all of the tropes they do, 
it does kind of feel like this one trope is the one they're doing sarcastically because they literally make him a, uh, like the fart and armpit kid from like <laughs> coming back for revenge. Like it's like that's a yeah. really silly idea. That's like the most self-aware the movie gets. And honestly, I like at the time I'm like, man, I should have seen that coming. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't. see that one come. Yeah, no, it caught like, me off guard. Like, it, it feels obvious in retrospect because, like, why else would you introduce that character? But, like, when it happens, you're like, oh, okay. I just, I thought it was funny how, how much Christopher Walken just wants to fucking destroy Country Bear All. <laughs> He's just sitting there at his desk. He has multiple scale models of Country Bear Hall and just keeps dropping a giant weight on it over and over and being like, oh no, they crushed Country Bear Hall. <laughs> it's like... Like, the most ridiculous, unhinged thing a villain could be doing. <laughs> and they play it out for a while. It's not, like, just, like, a quick <laughs> ten-second bit. That scene goes on for, like, a minute of him just doing that over and over again. Uh, Christopher Walken is the best part of this movie. He is. Absolutely. I, I mean, should we talk about cast if we're gonna talk about Christopher Walken? Yeah, we should, because I he think. gives... He gives such a funny, awkward performance. We have to talk about his iconic line, This isn't over! Bears! <laughs> it's because, like, his timing on certain lines is so weird where he'll be like... He ha he inserts pauses in really weird places where... I, I swear there was, like, a part at the beginning of the movie where he was, uh... He said, like, all good things must come to an end, luckily... And I thought he was saying it's good that that happens, but then it's like there's like such a long pause. He says, pause, and then he says, "You guys won't be around much longer," or something like that. And it's like, what a weird way to say that. Yeah, no, I mean, it's Christopher Walken just inserts weird pauses into his speech sometimes, but that that where when he's like yelling about his revenge. Yeah. Is not the place to have a random pause. <laughs> it feels like two unrelated sentences. <laughs> this it isn't over. Bears. <laughs> he looks like he was having a lot of fun in that movie, and I, I had fun with him. <laughs> best best character. Best character. Haley Joel Osment. I, I feel... He's, he was fucking great in Sixth Sense. He's, he was a good child actor, but I swear to God, he... Oh God, he, I I couldn't stand that kid in this movie. I I mean I couldn't stand him. I don't know if it, maybe it annoyed me more than it annoyed you, but he, they just made him. I don't even think it's his fucking fault. They made him the most whimsical, cheery character ever, and it's but it's like every line was so corny. It was like corniest fucking child character imaginable. I feel like he doesn't need to be here. I feel like you could easily have written him out of the script. Like, effortlessly, you could have written this character out of the script. You don't need him or the family. It feels like it's their attempt to connect with the kids. Like, yeah, I really can't say what he adds to the movie. It's like nothing. The family, if maybe if his, like, parents or brother were really funny, there could be that. But no, I feel, the only, like, the only thing I think that, like, comedy-wise that he contributes to the movie, and I don't even think it's funny, but they were clearly trying, is the two police officers trying to find this, like, kidnapped kid who just get dropped out of the movie they don't even show up at the concert at the end to see everything's okay they just when they're done they're done <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think it's funny that he is a bear and his family is human and he still is like was i adopted but like i don't the know. Com that the comedy so of much. that the comedy of that ends after the first scene <laughs> Even then, I think that's a that's a common bit. Maybe it wasn't as common in 2000, like, what was it, 2002, 2001? I think it's 2002. Yeah. 2000, yeah. I don't know, I, I, I just, I got nothing from his character. I got nothing from his fucking Reese-looking brother. The parents, they're trying to make the, the dad, they don't really find a quirk for. The mom, she bakes when she's worried, so there's that. The, the family's not done well at all. In fact, he leaves the family after we've met, known them for two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not, it's not good. The father is Stephen Tobolowski making a return appearance. Uh, he does not say that he hates the country bear's favorite food in this one. 
unlike in Garfield when he said he hated lasagna. Oh, that's what you were going on about. I remember yeah, you saying no, he's that. The villain. He's the villain in Garfield. He's the one who says, I hate lasagna. I think you were like kind of cutting out for me because we have this awkward thing on Discord where you like mute yourself and unmute yourself while we're watching the movie so I don't have to like hear the echo. But I think sometimes it cuts you off by like a second. And I, I didn't hear what you said, but I was also just like, oh, what's Matt going on about? Never mind. Doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Another comeback. There's a... We already met, mentioned Elton John. I'm honestly surprised that Stephen Root and Kevin Michael Richardson haven't appeared yet, considering how much shit they do, especially Kevin Michael Richardson with all of his voice acting work. I figured he'd shown up in one of the animated movies we've covered so far, but no. No, he's been pretty good, actually. I mean, he has a great voice. He has a great voice. He like is. He, he is. Um, he, he's kind of one of those voice actors where you know his voice when you hear it, but he's like, no one else can do it like him. It's... You know, it, it, you kind of you have your voice actors out there, like your your Gilbert Gottfries or um, what's that voice actor with the really high voice? He voiced the alien in Lilo and Stitch. He, you know who I'm talking about? Oh, oh, uh, Kevin McDonald. Yeah, Kevin McDonald. I'd even say Zach Hadel lately because even he's like showing up. He like he has a really unique voice, and even he's showing up in like kids' cartoons now. But yeah, Kevin Michael Richardson. You you he has so many roles. Like I. <laughs> I, I I love American Dad. He's really funny as the principal on that show. Um, oh yeah, but he God. has. A, <laughs> but One he's of got the a lot of roles characters like on that. American Dad. I think. I uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think American Dad has a lot of funny characters, but he's probably one of the best. American Dad's just such a stu- It's such a willfully stupid show. <laughs> um, but he was he was good as like as Henry. He was good. Like I, I think his voice is good for the one of the bears. Mentioned Stephen Root too. I, I mainly know him from Barry, which is a great show that I'll keep recommending. Um, and he's good on that. Uh, he was fine as Zeb. I don't really like. I can't really call anything out about his voice. In fact, Zeb's just kind of there because like his part in the movie is like he wants to get back with his uh, girlfriend. And once they do that, which they do like the scene after he joins the group. <laughs> uh, yeah, kinda, he's just kind of done. Not much of an arc after that. Yeah, he, yeah, he was, he's just like, I miss my girlfriend, here's your girlfriend, I'm done doing stuff now. <laughs> like, that's kind of what I it mean, is. I mean, the girlfriend does even less. Like, yeah, she, th- I legitimately just... forgot she was there for, for, like, part of the movie. It feels like they wanted that song in there, and they were like, okay, that's how we do it. And they didn't have anything else. Them kissing on stage reminded me of a scene from A Mighty Wind, but that's such, like, an obscure movie, and I don't want to spend, like, 20 minutes explaining the joke, so I'll just I'll just throw that one out there for my Mighty Wind fans. Brad Garrett is one of them, so I get to recycle my joke from uh, uh, Christmas is Here Again, where I called him Brad Barrett. <laughs> Brad Garrett has a really good voice. I My mom really liked him when i was a kid she she would watch i uh everybody loves raymond just to see him on it yeah i mean he was really good as this uh i mean he, his deeper voice really worked well with this character too like it uh yeah no I, th- I thought he was i think most of the bears had good voices i mean i like steven root but i don't really his didn't really stand out to me but then you have uh uh what day daedric how do you say his name D- Diedrich Diedrich? Bader. Diedrich who Bader, both, I think he was good as Ted. Who is both Ted and the cop, and it's like oh, yeah. pretty obvious that both of them are Diedrich Bader. You see, it wasn't obvious to me because I don't think I know this guy too well. But uh, I, I'm noticing now that I'm like looking at his picture on the cast, and it's like, oh yeah, no, I recognize that face. Yeah, I mean, not no, no, not a diss to not a diss to him. I think he was good in this. Did he sing, or did they have a different singer? I don't. I don't even think his character sang. No, his character sang well, in Well, wait, no, I take, I take that back. His, his character did sing. I thought the I singing voice was good. I f- feel like it probably was someone else. I know uh, Tennessee, the character Tennessee O'Neill, the singing voice was Don Henley of of the the Eagles. Oh, they even made a joke about that. Which, yeah, he even appears, like, at the bar and says, like, oh, they're better than the Eagles. They did do that a couple of times where they had the uh, actor uh, for, like, the bear show up. Like, uh, who was it? Um, 
person who played Trixie. I think she shows up in the scene where they reunite at the bar, too. Um, oh, you know what? I'm looking at the Haunted Mansion cast. That's why I can't find her. Um, I might be wrong. Bonnie, Bonnie Raitt, right? Raitt? Oh, Raitt? the singing voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think she appeared, Bonnie, uh, I think she made a physical appearance, too. Yeah, Bonnie Raitt is the singing voice. I I could not tell you offhand uh, did the singing voice for Ted. Maybe it was Diedrich Bader. That'd be impressive. If it was, he had a good voice. It would make sense to get people who could sing to fucking do the voices, too. I don't know. It's like, I know not everyone can sing and voice act, but some people can. Daryl Mitchell is one of the funny cops. Uh, like I said, I just didn't get a lot out of those two. They were clearly trying really hard. Um, they even had some, like, Home Alone-esque slapstick with the car wash scene. Oh, here we go. John Hyatt was the singing voice. Oh, okay. I went I went to see what this director has worked on. Uh this is his only movie, but he is slated to direct the upcoming Dogman movie based on oh. uh the the book by Captain Underpants writer Dave Pilkey. I've heard about that from Chris because like uh her son is really excited about that. Because I think Dogman's kind of, like, replaced Captain Underpants. Like, that's kind of his, like, new big IP. I, I'm i kind of under the impression that Dogman is, like, one of George and Harold's characters. You might be. Like, you, you remember when they released, like, an entire Diaper Baby movie? Or a Diaper Baby book that was all in their style? I think, I think Dogman is supposed to be like that. Uh, very possible. I think he has, like, the same sketchy look that the Captain Underpants comics, like, in-universe comics had. I don't know. I haven't read Dogman, actually. No, I, I think by the time that came out, I outgrown Despite it. Despite my, my Captain Underpants obsession, that was a little past my time. I mean, yeah, when was the first one? That was, like, 2016. We were both adults. <laughs> oh, yeah, God. No, I was way past Captain Underpants at that point. I that was like around when I went to see the movie, though. I did like the movie. I like the movie. I, I I didn't ever like finish the books that like because it went on a very long hiatus. I never read the books that came out after the hiatus, but I did watch the movie. The movie was solid. Mm, I think the last one I returned was uh, the last one I read was like the Return of Professor Poopy Pants. Or Tippy Tinkle Trousers, as he was now calling himself. Yes, yes. That was the cliffhanger I ended on. Like, I didn't actually read the one after that. I I feel like it ended on a cliffhanger around the time I quit, too. <laughs> Anyways, do we have anything else to say about the Country Bears? Not, not me, personally. It's, uh... It's not that bad, but it's not that interesting, either. Moving into, like the realm of where we have to vote, I would say these are on pretty equal footing. Yeah, I'm happy to give it, in terms of my vote, uh, unless you want to vote first, I don't know. Uh, I'll vote first, because you introduced the movie first. We used to have this down, I used to, like, keep track <laughs> of this, and every episode it would be, I introduce the first movie, you introduce the second... And then whoever introduced the second movie voted first, and whoever introduced the first movie voted second, and then we would swap every episode, and then we got kind of caught up in, like, a bunch of guests and stuff, and I, I just lost track of it. Oh. So I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get us back on track with this. So I'm gonna vote first. And I, again, very close. Very close to me. I think I'm gonna vote Country Bears. Really? And the big reason I'm going Country Bears is just the music. Because, like, no, no matter how boring the film got, I was like, okay, well, soon enough they're gonna start singing and I can just kind of jam out to the music. You know, I really liked the music in this movie. And that helped me sort of hang on... Where, where it didn't in Haunted Mansion. There are other things I could point to. For one thing, I think there's much higher potential for a Haunted Mansion movie uh, that it failed to live up to, where Country Bears, like, you could have done 
a better Country Bears movie than this, but I don't know how much better a Country Bears movie could be than this. I, I feel like this is pretty much what you expect out of a Country Bears movie, where Haunted Mansion, you could have done so much more with the Haunted Mansion. I also, and again, this is something that's close, I think I got more laughs out of the Country Bears. I, I genuinely think I got more laughs out of the Country Bears movie than I did the Haunted Mansion movie. So yeah, I'm voting for the the Country Bears. I am prepared for you to disagree with me, but... You know what's really weird? I think it's so close that I think for the first time in the history of doing the show, you, given your answer first, may have changed the outcome, because I think you may have just convinced me. Because no, I'm like, I was going to give it to Haunted Mansion because I think that it has more, from a filmmaking perspective, this movie has the animatronic suits, but um, aside from that, like, there's really nothing special about these sets. I mean, they're not terrible or anything, they're fine, they're serviceable, but there's nothing interesting about them. Where Haunted Mansion, it kind of keeps throwing stuff at you, so I could, it kind of gets you there. I don't think I, I don't remember laughing at Haunted Mansion, at least not from, like, anything in the movie. We were making jokes that made me laugh, but, um... I think I probably did get more enjoyment from the music or the, uh, j- like, or some of the jokes that did land in Country Bears, where Haunted Mansion, yeah, I mean, God, I, 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 I felt like I was going to fall asleep during both of these, but I will say I probably felt more lively during Country Bears. So you know what? Fuck it. I, I change. I agree with you. I'm, I'm going to vote Country Bears. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I changed Michael's mind. Hey, you know what? <laughs> You know what? We are against the audience. Not a surprise to me. I am not surprised at all that Haunted Mansion won this vote. Very. This was, again, one of our more popular votes. Now that doesn't mean shit. The last time I said that uh, was our... Hold on. The Ralph Breaks the Internet Space Jam 2 uh, a poll got 132 votes. The, the, The episode has yet to break that. The episode has fewer views than the the poll had votes. But uh, this one had 146 votes. This is one of our most popular really? polls for the show. And it's it's 72% for the Haunted <coughs> Mansion, which is a sizable margin. But I don't know, 28% for the Country Bears. That's not awful. And the one no. comment we got was in support of the Country Bears. Oh, yeah. Uh, random review. R- Random Reviews says Haunted Mansion is the fourth worst thing that Disney has ever made. Which I don't know <laughs> if I agree with that. I think I could come up with four th- worst things Disney has made. I think I could come up with four worst movies Disney has made that we've covered on this show. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think I could do it off the top of my head. In fact, I could try Lion King 2019, Hunchback 2, um... Uh, Fox and the Hound 2, I mean, I'll only, uh, Fox and the Hound 2, I'll name someone that isn't a Disney sequel, uh, you know what, um, I'm trying to, and uh, you know, uh, uh, there's some Disney Channel movie for sure, uh, Hannah Montana the movie there. I was at least gonna say John Carter and Mars Needs Moms. I think I probably have those ranked higher, honestly, <laughs> than Country Bears, uh-huh. I don't know, I don't hate, I mean, I, I don't think they're good, but... I gotta be honest, I, I, I feel like this was, I, I, I feel like this was just such a throwaway pair up. I'm not like, not. I don't say that to be mean, it's going to happen. And I think that the doing it off the, the rides is a good angle to take. Not This is not an insult at your pair up. It's just a insult at these two movies. It's like, this is like one of the, like probably like just another one down I have felt doing the show. <laughs> I mean, on the one hand, I agree with you, but like I said, I think these are two of the, like, objectively best movies we've watched. Far from the most entertaining. Yeah. But, like, I don't know, these were both, like, fine. (laughs) They both had a lot of people working on them, and a lot of people who did their job correctly, a lot of it just came down to... Either the idea not being that interesting or the script not being that interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Country Bears wins. Woo! All right. Well, Michael, you might you might hate this after what you just said. Now that we've seen The Haunted Mansion, would you like to watch The Haunted Mansion? 
Oh, come on. Because I this match <laughs> This this matchup was the the Disney ride movies from the 2000s. It's the 2020s. We've got two more Disney ride movies. It's the Jungle Cruise 2021 versus the Haunted Mansion 2023. Matt, I'll do it, but I have to <laughs> let you know that like when I heard about both of these movies, I don't think I was ever less enthused about seeing something in my entire life. And I was just like, I'm not ever going to watch these unless Matt makes me. <laughs> that is the thought I had with maybe not. I don't know if we were doing the show when Jungle Cruise came out. Um, probably we were. But I was just like, I have no fucking interest in this. Looks, this looks boring as shit to me. Haunted oh, no, Mansion no, it, 20. It made my most pointless movies of the year list. <laughs> Not excited for it, but I'll do it. <laughs> All right. I. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm. We'll do a I, fun I, I... one. We'll do a fun one after this. I promise. I, it's got to be done. I get it. No, I, I get I get why you're doing this. It's got to be done. It's, an, it's, it's covering new ground. It's uh, we got to put we got to put Disney in their place. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, fuck them. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> until next time, uh, for my co-host, Mackle Schnackle, I am Matt Presents. We will see you in the next one. Peace.